On December 12th, I was sitting at home. I was on the uh, start of my vacation and sitting in my lazy boy chair, enjoying the presence of the Lord, and my uh, cell phone dinged, and it was a message from Pastor Andre on December 12th, early in the morning. And he um, sent me a video of a man named Osby Berry singing, So Will I. And I really believe is I had an encounter with God for about the next probably well, 45 minutes or an hour, and he began to speak to me. And I listened through the 11-minute video you're going to see in just a minute, and I worshiped with the Lord. And he spoke very clearly to me and reminded me what he spoke to me in 1996 when he knocked me flat on the platform and said, take my gospel to the nations. And I was not understanding. Have you ever had God speak to you and you're not understanding? He just wants you to say yes. That's all he really wants is just to say yes, and we want to have it all explained out. I wonder why it's going on. All God wants is yes. And uh, I was trying to figure, I said, well, Lord, I've already done that. And, he, and so finally, after panting and looking like I was having a baby and falling flat on the platform and crying and shaking and looking like the way most men don't want to look in front of everybody publicly, and God confused me and told me to do something he told me I should never do again, and God will confuse you at times. He only told me to do what I thought I was going to do, I never ended up doing it because he just wanted to get me here so he could move on me before the service. And he reminded me as I was singing that this was the assignment I gave you in 1996. It hasn't changed. And the nations are not just out there. The nations are right in here. The nations are all around our community. And if you think that the world is white, you're, you're, you're very mistaken. Two-thirds of all the people in the world have Asian background in their life. And we're, we're a church that loves all people, all nations. Part of my dream is to see people from every nationality, from every walk of life, poor, rich, red, white, black, brown, purple, polka dotted, you know, blue hair, green hair, no hair, all be in the body of Christ together. And So I was at home worshiping and just having a good time with the Lord. I called my wife in and then we worshiped together. And, and I believe that for the rest of this year in 2019, maybe beyond, you're going to hear the Holy Spirit often say, so will I. And I'm going to ask you to say to God today as, this, as we worship, and I'm going to invite you when the video starts to worship. In the first service, the whole front was filled with people just worshiping. This is not for you to be a, a spectator. This is for you to participate. And I think when you hear the words and you hear Osby, there's an anointing on this thing, and it's going to make you, I hope, surrender to the Lord and what he wants to do in this coming year. And I'll tie a message into eight of the things that he says. They're biblical principles. And so God wants you, you might as well get ready, start saying it now, so will I. So will I. So will I. See, Jesus and his followers said to the Father, so will I. I will. Not my will but be done, but your will. See, it's not about so much our dreams and our thoughts and all those things, all that's part of it. It's about his dream. It's about the dream of Jesus, about the dream of the Father for the nations to come. We live in an incredible time when we need the church of God to rise up. We need spirit-filled churches full of the Holy Spirit. We're, we're, we're living in a very evil and dark time. I don't know if we often realize it. Um, I made my wife a promise about 18 years ago that if Huskies ever went back to the Rose Bowl, I would take her. She's a graduate. and I grew up about the time I was five years old going to Husky games with my dad when he was the mayor of Mount Lake Terrace and got invited to those things. And we ended up down in California. She wanted to see the Rose Parade and do the whole thing. And Jack Schenecker was in our hotel, and the man who used to run CT, we just had divine appointments all the way through in airports everywhere we went. When people walk up and say, hi, Pastor Hammer, and you don't have a clue who they are, and you're in the middle of Los Angeles, Pasadena, thinking, this is t Lord, this is crazy. And Jack Schenecker was there, one of our uh, former elders, 90, he's 90 years old now. He was sent his son-in-law to uh, accost me in, in the hotel eating place the first morning, and we ended up having New Year's Eve dinner with Jack and Verda. That was awesome. But we're in the, in the parade stands, and we, we walked about 6.9 miles that day. Yeah, we had to get up leave our hotel at 3.30, but we got into the seats that we had got so we made sure we could see the parade. And there's thousands of people before the parade. They're already out on the streets the day before. They have, they have campfires going on the sides of the street. There's people everywhere. All the shops are boarded up with wood, and there's uh, security all over the place. And... Um, there was also a, a numerous uh, cloud of uh, street preachers with bullhorns and microphones telling everybody they were going to go to hell, and you know just what you want to hear on New Year's Day, 
not, not a whole lot of love and grace being preached. I mean, I've never been in a place where I've seen so many street preachers with bullhorns and screaming. Korean churches, uh, you know, about every nationality known to mankind was doing their thing. And so we finally got up in the stands and we were befriending a family that was sitting, I was talking to them, it looked like they might be Jewish and they were from California and were talking to us. And so then the, the last street preacher we saw came walking down. He was a little bit nicer than some of the other street, if you want to compare him, but he was saying, Jesus loves you and da 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 and speaking and um, all of a sudden he started to quote a verse and he said, you know, such were some of you, some of you were adulterers, some of you were fornicators. You know, some of you were liars. And then he said, and some of you were homosexual. And when he said the word homosexual, you can ask my wife, I've never seen a reaction like this in my whole life. The whole area erupted in screaming at this man. I mean, instantaneous. It wasn't even like, did you hear what he said? It was like a millisecond after he got the word out of his mouth, the whole crowd looked like they were going to kill this guy. And I said, oh my goodness. I think it was a picture of what we're headed towards. Yeah. And, uh, it, you know, and then I'm going, well, you get killed here, you know, and I'm talking, you know, we're talking, and then everybody's kind of like, <gasps> you know, it's kind of like, oh my goodness, and the guy, he was kind of trying to be funny, and he's, as he's walking down the street, he goes, boy, you're a rough crowd, he says, and then the guy next to my wife stands up and yells at the preacher, you know, these thousands of people masked, and goes, go to hell, to the preacher, and they all start clapping, and I'm, I'm sitting there going, oh my goodness, see, sometimes we need to have encounters like that to realize that the world needs Jesus. They need the love of God. We need to see a Holy Spirit revival. It's the only hope for our nation. We need to see a revival. We need to see a reformation. We need to see a restoration. We need to be, see reconciliation between races and people. I believe God's going to do that. So we're going to start playing this video in just a moment. I'm just going to invite you. I'm going I'm to worship up front. I really don't care if you like that or not because I'm going to worship, I'm a worshiper, and we need a spirit-filled church full of the love of Jesus Christ that's going to shift the culture. God's looking for his church to rise up. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of people that are compromising the message. Now, we need to be very careful as we preach the truth that we preach it with love, that we preach it with love, because right now the world sees us as a bunch of haters, but it doesn't matter. We just need to continue to love them, and we need to keep honoring the Lord and keep honoring the message of the gospel. So I want you to respond. I want you during this time, we're going to worship the Lord. If you want to come up front, you want to kneel down. Um, I know Diane Fink came to me and said, I was weeping before this even started. There's something that God's putting to birth today that's going to set the course of this whole, this is a supernatural encounter. I hope, if you, I hope you didn't just come for a church service because it's not going to be a church service. We're going to have an encounter with the living God. So go ahead and roll it and you worship along with me. We've got 11 minutes. All right, guys. So let's, let's settle down some. We need you to sing this song with us. Listen up, listen up. Out of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, he spoke to the dark and out the wonder of life and as you speak a hundred billion galaxies are born and the vapor of your breath the planet warm if the stars so alive, I can see your heart in everything you make. Every burning star will signify a 
voices. Come on. Your promise still stands. Say, promise. His promises still stand. We are still. So will I. So will I. The song says, if the stars were made to worship, so will I. 1 Corinthians 15, 41 says, there is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differs from another star in glory. Psalm 148, verse 3 says, Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. Daniel 12, 3 says, Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. In 2019, God wants you to release the glory that he's put within you. Every star, it says, contains a different glory. And the Holy Spirit uses the analogy of the stars to speak to us. And God put in you a glory that's in no one else. And 2019 needs to be a time when you praise him because the Bible says if the stars uh, still praise him, so will I. And as you allow your life to shine before men, they will see your good works and glorify the Father. The Holy Spirit wants you to have your light shine. He wants you to shine bright like a star. This is not a time to hide from the darkness. This is a time to walk in the midst of the darkness and let your light shine. We are going to shine like the stars of the firmament as we turn many to righteousness. There's a world out there that needs to see a spirit-filled, loving church full of the Spirit of God, full of the grace of God, full of the truth of God, living the Christian life. And people say, well, what if they uh, kill us and what if they do? Well, then we'll look down from our cross and we'll say, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. That's our response to a world that's tried to make us opposed and has called us haters, is to continue to love them with the love of Jesus Christ and to declare the truth in love. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. Will you say, so will I? Will you let your light so shine? Will you, so will I, let your light shine that people will be touched by your life? And then the other part of the song says, secondly, if creation sings your praises, so will I. If creation, if all of creation was created to bring glory to God, the sun, the moon, the stars, the oceans, the waters, the rivers, everything that was created was created to bring him glory and honor. I love Romans chapter 8, verses 19 to 22. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who was subjected in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. And part of what we're seeing all in the world is there's a groaning going on in creation. And the groaning is is that the creation wants to see sons and daughters of God arise up in their place. God is over and over dealing with our identities to know who we are. The enemy wants to destroy your identity. He wants to destroy the identity of individuals with gender issues and things. But God wants us to know that we are sons and daughters of the living God. And there's a groaning and a travailing that's happening in the realm of the Spirit because God is birthing something through the worship and the praise of his sons and daughters. And he wants you to be fully manifest in 2019. I had an encounter a few years ago when they invited me down to the state capitol to help lead a water land issue. I had no idea what I was doing. I'm in my devotions this morning on January 6, 2019, same passage that God spoke to me out of in that moment back in 2010. 
They invited me to come and lead and overturn a land water issue. The lower courts ruled that the state could take away the rights of the land and water from the people. I don't know why God allowed me to go there, but you know what happened when we went there? They said there's something else going on here beyond this issue. They said Democrats and Republicans will come from all over the state. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I was supposed to be leading this thing. All I knew is the Lord said yes and show up, so I did. He said there'll be a type of Revelation chapter 10 happening today. And if you read Revelation chapter 10, God asked me a number of questions. I'm not going to go into them, but he told me that when I come into my position as a son of God, into my calling apostolically, that even creation will come back to what it was created for. That morning when we went to the state capitol, there was three perfect rainbows over the rotunda. Three perfect rainbows right over the top of the rotunda, about 10 feet apart. The Olympia newspaper said it's the first time in history that's ever happened. And the Lord told me, when you come into your alignment as a son, even creation is longing for you to come into your alignment and assignment as a son, and now creation is doing what it was created for. You know what? God's waiting for you sons and daughters to rise up. All of creation is groaning for you to rise up as a bright shining star, to let your glory be released, that, the, that, the, that even creation itself can come back. And I always was thinking that was back when, when Jesus comes. Yes, it's going to be when Jesus comes. But even before that, there's precursors and, and visions of what God wants to do. Creation is longing and travailing. Some of the things that are going on in creation is just creation saying, sons and daughters, rise up. Sons and daughters, be revealed. Come into your place of identity. Say, so will I. So will I. The enemy's told you it's not going to happen. Your promises aren't going to happen, but I've got good news for you. God is faithful to all his promises. And just step up as your place as a son and daughter and say, so will I. So will I. God, I'm ready to shine for you in 2019. I'm ready for you to reveal, to cause creation to come back and do what it was created for. And what do you do when you go through trials and tests? Exactly what happened in Genesis 22 in the law of first mention theologically. The first time worship is mentioned is in Genesis 22 when Abraham goes up to Mount Moriah to offer his son as a sacrifice. And he says, I and the lad will go yonder and worship and we shall return. You might be in a place in your promise where it looks like everything's against your promise happening. Even God's asking you to sacrifice and put to death the thing that he put into your heart. I've got good news. If the stars will praise him, if all of creation worships him, then so will I. In your point of test in 2019, get before God and begin to worship him. And as you begin to worship him, watch what, watch what begins to happen. You and I pass the test by worshiping when we don't even understand. All we're just saying is, so will I. Yes, God, I will obey. I know what you spoke to me. It doesn't matter what it looks like in the natural. I believe your word. You're the God that not one syllable, did you hear that? Not one syllable is void of what he says. All of science and nature, all of creation obeys his bidding. All of the world and the universes are held together by the power of his word. And there's a world waiting for sons and daughters to be manifest through their life and their worship and their sacrifice that will draw many into the kingdom. Those that shine like the stars will be as bright as the firmament and those who bring many to righteousness will shine. I don't know about you, but I see some glory shining here. Thirdly, if all of creation still obeys you, so will I. All of creation is obeying the word of God. All of creation is, is responding to the creator. Colossians 1, 15 to 18, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things and in him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. If all of creation is still obeying him, if all the things that are visible and invisible, all thrones and dominions are by him and through him and for him, we need to have, take the message to the nations. We need to take the message to the community. People that have been duped by the ideas and philosophies of men, that there is a creator that if you'll obey him, you'll come into alignment. You'll come into your destiny. You'll come into salvation. You'll come into the reason you were created for. And we don't need to be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. We don't need to be ashamed of the creator. We need to see creation come back into alignment. Men and women and young people 
Israel under the authority and the lordship of Christ. He is Lord over all. He is Lord over all. And in all things, he will have the preeminence. And I say, so will I. I come into alignment in 2019 with the purposes of God. I will worship. I will obey you just as creation obeys you with whatever you tell me to do. I love 1 Samuel 15, 22. Saul was told to make sacrifices, and he did, and he kept some things back. And the prophet Samuel comes to him and says to Saul, oh, to obey is better than sacrifice. To hearken is better than the fat of rams. Please do not make sacrifices this year to make up for your disobedience. It doesn't please God at all. You know what? Often when we don't obey God, we try and make sacrifices to him. We make bargains with him. God is not pleased with that. If all of creation obeys him, so will I. And what do you say if all creation obeys him? So will I. That's about... 25% there. If all creation obeys him, so will I. You're going to hear that in your spirit all year long. Number four, if the oceans roar your greatness, so will I. If you're, the oceans roar your greatness. Have you ever been on a seaside or on an ocean when the waves are just splashing in Hawaii or California or Westport or, you know what, it's amazing, the sound the sound of his greatness. Are you going to declare his greatness? See, the, the, the world and the devil's trying to silence the church. They're trying to keep us quiet. But we need to sound his greatness. If the oceans roar his greatness, are you going to roar this year? Are you going to roar, so will I? Are you going to roar, so will I? I will not be silenced. I will declare the greatness of our God. How great is our God? How great is our God? How great is our God? And we don't need to be ashamed. We don't need to be ashamed. Habakkuk 2.14, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Matthew 8.27, so the men marveled saying, who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? We need to roar his greatness. We need to declare his greatness to the nations. We need to declare his greatness to the poor, to the rich, to people of all nations and tongues and tribes and kindreds. We need to roar his greatness in this season. Like the ocean, may we roar up and wave after wave of his praise and his worship, wave after wave of declaring his great works, wave after wave of roaring with the light of the tribe of Judah, that the nations will hear that the shout of the king is among them, that the shout of the king of kings and the Lord of lords is among us. Let us roar his greatness in the school. Let us roar his greatness in the marketplace. Let us roar his greatness in the malls. Let us roar his greatness in the public square. Let us roar his greatness in the businesses. Let us roar his greatness once again in the universities and the college. Let us roar his greatness. Let us not be ashamed. If they kill us, they'll kill us. If they don't want to hear, they won't have to hear. But we will declare the greatness of God. Even if the oceans roar his greatness, so will I. So will I. Number five, if the wind obeys where you send it, so will I. If the wind obeys where you send it, so will I. You ever tried to catch the wind? <laughs> Try it. The Bible says in Job, he holds the winds in his fist. He holds the winds, he can stop the wind. Where did that wind come from? came from your lungs. Where did that wind come from? When the wind blew last night at 60 miles an hour, when I slept right through it, where did it come from? The Bible says in John 3, verses 7 and 8, I love when he spoke to Nicodemus, who didn't have a clue. The great member of the Sanhedrin. He says, do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. If you're born of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit can blow you wherever. He can blow you into opportunities. He can open doors of opportunity. He can release you into cities and nations. He can give you platforms you've never dreamed of. He can open doors that would literally be shut by every natural mean, by every demonic force. And the wind is going to blow. I'm, I'm telling you right now, in 2019, the wind is going to blow. And I'm praying that we will have a spirit-filled church on fire for God, that we'll have people, when they get up and prophesy, they'll prophesy under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that the 
electricity and the dynamic that will be released into the meetings won't just say, well, I was on my way to church today and had a couple of thoughts, but the Spirit of God will descend and fall like it did on the day of Pentecost. There will be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit that our sons and daughters will prophesy, that little children will come in here and they'll dream dreams and have visions, that old men and young men will work together and see the visions and the dreams of God released, and that we won't ever have unusual, unusual church services. There will be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit that we will say, send the Holy Spirit revival to our nation. Pour out your Holy Spirit on our city. Pour out your Holy Spirit on our state, on our county. Pour out your Holy Spirit on the nations of the earth. We will not be satisfied. We will give our lives. We will give ourselves to death till we see the moving of the Holy Spirit capturing cities, capturing government officials, capturing university presidents, coming into stadiums, filling the cities with the presence and the power of God. That we'll see like Paul, cities shaken by the power of God. Romans 8, 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. They are the mature sons of God. I want to be led by the Spirit. I want to see meetings like I did in Indonesia when the Holy Spirit fell before we even spoke and little Muslim children were smitten to the ground with no one touching them, no one coercing them, nobody praying over them, but the Holy Spirit falling them, them falling on the ground and crying out to Jesus and having visitations and dreams, getting up and saying, Jesus appeared to me. I'm now a believer in Jesus. Jesus. I renounce those things that I believed and I believe in Jesus. I don't know about you, but I don't want to just go to a church. I want to see the Holy Spirit move. I want to be amidst of a people who are crying out and hungry. The only thing that's going to save this nation is a move of the Holy Spirit. The only thing that's going to save this nation is the church repenting and seeing a revival, seeing a reformation, seeing a restoration, seeing uh, God bring a revival unparalleled in human history. Oh, praise God. He's going to do it. Obey when the Holy Spirit blows and sends you. Those little promptings. See, Andre obeyed the Holy Spirit on December 12th and sent me something that released something in me. It's released a fire in me again. Not that the fire went out, but it added fuel to the fire. You know, I've lived all my life. I, I've been in this region for 43 and a half years. I've been contending for a Holy Spirit revival. I don't want to just have, you know, same old, same old. I remember back in 1976 when God you know, visited me in the charismatic movement. Well, praise God, but that was a long time ago. I want God to visit 2019 with the Holy Spirit. I want a church on fire. A church full of the Holy Ghost, full of the Word of God, totally uncompromising, totally unafraid of what the devil, you know what? This has been a year of battles in 2018, but this will be a year of supernatural breakthroughs when the church will rise up and say, we're not going to let you go till you give us our promises. We've contended too long. We're going to be like Jacob. You're going to change us into Israel, and we're not going to let you go till you bless us, until you be an outpouring on our schools. And we refuse to cower to the enemy. We refuse to listen to what the world says. We refuse to listen to what people say. But we will believe the God who's going to cause the wind to blow again, and we're going to blow with the wind of the Spirit. If the wind obeys where you send it, so will I. If the wind obeys where you send it, so will I. And I will go wherever he tells me to go, and I will do whatever he tells me to do. I'm totally committed. I'm a fanatic, in case you didn't know that. Oh, and number six, if you left the grave behind you, so will I. If you left the grave behind you, I want to tell you, get off your 2018 grave clothes. They're way out of style. It's time to take off your grave clothes. If Jesus left the grave behind you, get rid of your grave clothes. God's going to fashion you with the Holy Spirit armor. He's going to fill you with robes of righteousness. He's going to give you the coat of many colors. He's giving you a ring. Begin to use your authority. He's giving you a mouth. Use your mouth. Use your hands. Use your feet to serve him. Oh, God's about ready to do something that you've never seen before in your life. You watch what God's going to do. Oh, praise God. If you left the grave behind you, so will I. Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through the spirit who dwells in you. The first Adam was made a living spirit, a living soul, but the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. If you've got a disease or a sickness in your body, I want you to stand right now. I want you to stand right now. He left the grave behind him, so will I. And Lord, I speak in the name of Jesus. 
I speak to those grave clothes. I remove them in Jesus' name. I break death. I break sickness. I break disease off in Jesus' name. And the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Lord Jesus, you are the quickening spirit. I pray you'd quicken mortal bodies, that allergies, that food things would go away. God, that ulcers would be healed. Cancers would disappear. Tumors would be gone, Lord God. Endometriosis would disappear in Jesus' name. Migraine headaches would go, Lord God. Allergies, asthmas would be gone. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. Quicken them, Lord. Quicken them in Jesus' name by the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Romans 8, 12 and 13. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you by the spirit put to deed the deaths of the body, you will live. I just want you to take, get rid of your stinking thinking. You know what, if you got any stinking thinking, it's time to take that old turban off your head, get rid of those grave clothes, just like Lazarus. We're gonna un untake those grave clothes off your mindsets that keep you bound, that keep you down, that keep you pushed out. We declare that there'll be a new, a new uh, a turban put on the people's head that say holiness to the Lord, the pure mind of Christ, that they will begin to think thoughts of love, of victory, of truth, of righteousness, of holiness, of who they are in Christ. And the devil will be so discouraged because there'll be no ability to penetrate the mind of Christ that you've given us, oh God. And I take off grave clothes in Jesus' name. I thank you that death has fled. We are spirit-led. Death has fled. We are spirit-led. If you left the grave behind us, so will I. If you left the grave behind you, so will I. Tell them, you don't look good in grave cloths. Tell the person next, you don't look good in grave cloths. God's got new clothes for you this year. Get ready for a whole new wardrobe. We're not done yet. Number seven, if you gladly chose surrender, so will I. If you gladly chose surrender, so will I. We're gonna have to make some surrenders this year. Yes. Luke 22, 41, 42. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw and he knelt down and prayed saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, do not my will, but yours be done. Nevertheless, not my will be done, but your will be done. You're going, to come to, you're going to come to moments of consecration where it's not going to feel good. You're not going to like what God's going to ask you. I just want to say, you know what? He gladly chose surrender. Just surrender. Just say, Lord, I don't understand. It's going to be hard, but I surrender to your will. I surrender to your purposes. John 5.30, I can do of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. You know what? He did the Father's will. It's all about the Father's will. There's so much self-centered teaching about your self-centered destiny and what you're going to get for yourself. You know what Jesus said, not my will be done, but your will be done. And we die to our own ways and our own will and we surrender to his will. God begins to do supernatural things. You gladly chose surrender, so will I. You gladly chose surrender, so will I. And number eight, if you gave your life to love them, so will I. If you gave your life to love them, so will I. You know, when I sat in that grandstand in Pasadena and I heard the voice of the people, I said, how sad, Jesus. How sad that this is what the world has come to. It put a great love and compassion in my heart for those people that are totally duped by the works of darkness and the enemy. Why are we here? Why, why did God leave us on the planet? He gave his life. He left heaven so he could come to earth to give his life that people could be saved, that people could become sons and daughters of the living God. They could be born again. They could fulfill their purposes throughout all eternity. Luke 19, 10, for the Son of Man has come to save and to seek that which was lost. I see the homeless people walking up and down the street, the tweakers, See the people driving by in their Mercedes and their beautiful cars that are just as lost. See people from every background without him. Luke 5, 32, Jesus said, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. 1 Timothy 1, 15, this is a faithful saying worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. If you gave your life to love them, so will I.
I've lived in this region for 65 years. For 43 and a half years as a believer, I've longed for a revival. I've longed for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit that, that the Lamb would receive the sacrifice that is due his great work of people surrendering to him. I'm not done. We're going to see God move in this region. We're going to see people get saved. We're going to see people get delivered. But it's because we're going to say so will I. And it's going to cost us something. It's going to cost us everything. But you know what? There's nothing worth paying a greater cost for than laying down our lives for the sake of the gospel. I've had a number of encounters the last 30 days. And the Lord reminded me this was the call on your life in 1996. It hasn't changed. It's a call on this church. There's some of you that know that God's calling you. He's speaking to you. And he left us here to see people get saved. He left us here to make a difference in the world, in the church, in the schools, in the businesses. And he's just looking for a people that will say, so will I. Father, I just opened the altars today. And God, we want to have an encounter with you. God, this region is so desperately in need of the move of the Holy Spirit. So desperately in need of a church that's on fire and alive for you, oh God. Forgive us where we have fallen short. We thank you that a hundred billion failures disappear the moment we yield to you and say, Yes, Father. Yes, I will. Yes. So will I. Yes. God, I pray all over this sanctuary this morning, we turn this into, a, into an altar before you, this whole sanctuary. And I pray that many people will say, so will I. So will I. I'm just going to invite you to get up out of your seat and come, if God's spoken to you today. I know he's been speaking to me for over a month now. And I've said, so will I. I've said, God, wherever the wind blows... And as we see a church yielded to God, we're going to see the things that we've longed to have happen. You come and say, Lord, here am I. Send me. Here am I, Lord, I'll go. And then when he tells you next week to go to that person that sits across the office from you and ask if you can pray for them, when he tells you to stand up in the middle of something, that you'll say, so will I. Lord, I told you, so will I. And I'm going to say, if you're a prophetic person, begin to pray and say, God, release my prophetic ministry to a whole new level. I've been in meetings where the prophetic has got so specific with people's things and lives that people shake under the presence of God and the glory of God invades a place like it did in Indonesia when I was there. As it did here in this place many times. I remember the day there was seven of us praying here one Friday morning and the Lord spoke to me and said, for the next seven days, I'm going to visit you with what's coming. Every prayer we prayed in the morning was answered by three o'clock in the afternoon. Sometimes I had three people on the phone with answers to prayer. And I believe we're about ready to enter into places like that where God's gonna show up and people are gonna walk in off the streets and people are gonna get healed and the glory of God's gonna follow you. And you're gonna be in places where the presence of God is like when I walked into LA Fitness with Todd White, Green Represent, and all of a sudden the presence of God filled LA Fitness and the workout people didn't know what to do because the presence of God was there and the glory of God. And some of you know what? You're going to have to pray more. God's going to call you to lay aside some of those things. So you have to lay aside and say, Lord, as he tells you to lay them aside, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but the Holy Spirit will tell you what to lay aside. So will I, so will I. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to come and seal the message that you brought us today, Lord. To seal it in 2019 in this year of transition. May there be a transition of the move of the Holy Spirit, of the wind of God. Wind of the Spirit begin to blow in this fellowship. Begin to blow in this church family, Lord. 
begin to break down opposition and walls in the city, in the county, in the nation, in the nations, Lord. Things that have hindered us in the past, may they be broken off. And God, we thank you that grave cloths are coming off people, Lord. Grave cloths are coming off people, Lord. You're clothing them with robes of righteousness and robes of holiness and the coat of many colors, Lord. And I pray for a move of the Holy Spirit, the conviction of the Holy Spirit over this region, over our hearts, to be men and women of God, to be sons and daughters of God. I want you to begin to pray for one another. Begin to pray. Just pray over them that they will say, so will I. God might give you a prophetic word or just just yield and say, Lord, I yield. If you don't know Jesus, give your life to Jesus. He died on the cross for you. He's over all things, no matter what the wisdom of men say about Jesus. Jesus is the creator of all things. And he will be the man everyone will stand before one day and give an account for their lives. You pray for somebody. You might have to get out of your chair. If you're a couple, go pray for a single person. If you're single, go pray for a couple. And just start praying over them that God's will and purposes will be released in their life. Begin to pray over them. And come expecting. Come praying for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Come expecting God to use you to give a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom or to prophesy or to lay hands on a sick person and see them healed. Invite God into your workplace. Invite God into your home. Invite God and your neighbor and don't be surprised when he shows up and expects you to do something because he's going to co-labor with you. This sanctuary is going to be a place of prayer. Whenever you feel you want to leave, you leave. You stay as long as you want, but be quiet. If you want to talk, please talk outside unless you're praying for someone. So will I. So will I. So will I. We leave our grave close. So will I. Oh, we will go where the wind blows us. We will go where the wind blows us. Hallelujah.